Hey there everybody and welcome back to Open Shading Language for Blender. This is part six of the tutorial series and if you haven't seen parts one through five, I heavily recommend watching those. I say this at the beginning of every tutorial, but these videos build on each other. The concepts get more and more complicated. So in this one, I wanna talk about something that's gonna be vitally important for our shaders in the future and that is the idea of noise and randomness. They're, they're actually quite related. Um, if you are familiar, uh, inside of the node editor, uh, we have different kinds of textures like noise textures, they could be like musgraves and stuff like that. Uh, in the same vein, uh, we have different kinds of noises uh, when it comes to um, open shading language. So let's begin. As always, I'm going to make shader, I'm going to call this one random parentheses uh, curly braces. Uh, this is a shader called random and let's import that in, okay? Uh, what I wanna do is I want to, first of all, just display a noise texture uh, in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make an output. So it's outputting something called, well, first of all, it should output a, a number uh, called out. That's uh, very creative, but that's what I always do, uh, equal to zero. So uh, now this is outputting an out number uh, that is initialized to the value zero. But I'm gonna recast it so that it's equal to some noise. So I'm gonna say out is equal to, and this is where we get to the new part. Uh, you can type in noise or Perlin noise or cell noise. For now, let's start with noise of the coordinate system P. Remember P is a global variable that tells us the position for any point. Let's see if this uh, makes any errors. No, it doesn't. And you can see it actually generates, it's a little hard to tell, a noise texture that isn't the same everywhere. Let's scale this a bit by five. And now you can actually see this noise is getting uh, more visible. I think this is something we should probably expose as a parameter. So I'm gonna say float uh, scale uh, is equal to zero to initialize it. And let's multiply this by scale. So we have a procedural control over this. So now we have this uh, noise that we can calculate on the fly. Uh, this is useful because we can generate random numbers uh, with this. Notice that inside our noise function, we called a vector or a point quantity uh, because it's a, a position coordinate uh, scaled to some factor. Uh, we could have just as easily put in a float and this would make it the same uh, for every point. It's generating a single a random number because it's the noise of five everywhere. Uh, but if I make it like this, it will be that. Great sentence, Tom. Um, there's other kinds of noise like Perlin noise, uh, which that didn't seem to like it. Let's see what the issue is with this bad boy. I might have uh, misnamed it. Uh, Perlin was not this declared in the scope. Yep. Um, apparently noise uh, seems to work. Another one is cell noise. Let's see what that one looks like. Sometimes you have to change to CPU and then GPU, or maybe it only works on CPU. It seems like not everything works on the GPU, unfortunately. Uh, but you can see we do a cell noise that you can see is evaluated per cell. Uh, this is a uniformly distributed uh, noise. Uh, however, it's only evaluated between I and I plus one. There's some constant there. Um, and similarly, we can evaluate it at a single point. However, uh, when we're doing a um, random number generator, I would recommend instead of just typing in noise, although this is fine, is I'd recommend typing in hash noise, which I think is designed for a single number. So hash noise five, uh, let's actually plug in our scale over here. So as I change the scale, you can see it's giving us different random numbers. And I believe this one works on the GPU. It does, which is a reason to use it. Um, okay, so we have random numbers. Uh, let's actually do something with this. Something uh, simple, but a bit more complicated than what we've done before. Uh, remember, we know how to output a circle uh, using an if statement. Now let's output a circle in a random center point. So if, remember, parentheses, curly braces. Uh, if, let's see, the distance between our coordinates, P, and some central point. So I'm going to say point, or you could do vector, or I think maybe you need to do vector. Uh, but the distance between P and the point hash noise 
scale. So this is gonna be a bit more complicated than stuff we've seen before. So get ready for a longer line. This and then hash. Well, while I do recommend hash noise, this is just like smaller to type. So I'm just gonna type in noise for uh, convenience sake. Uh, noise of scale plus one, zero is less than let's say 0.5. So let's review what I just said here. I'm saying if the distance between our coordinates, every point, and the point, uh, random number in x component, different random number in y component, zero is less than 0.5. So again, think of this as I'm generating a uh, random point, except z is equal to zero. If the distance is less than 0.5, output, output one. Let's see what that looks like. So here you can see we have a circle uh, that is off center. If I change my scale, you can see it's actually moving around. That's cool. Um, I wonder if hash noise has a negative one to one kind of thing going on. Because I know some of these are between zero and one. Uh, but a correction for that is subtra you subtract by 0.5. So it's actually on the negative 0.5 to 0.5 random number generation. And now you can see we have a circle uh, that moves around and it seems to be kind of continuous, uh, which is cool. Okay, uh, so, and by the way, to make it seem more random, you could offset it by 100. That way they don't seem as linked. Um, but uh, there you go. We can generate random numbers and random noise, and this is gonna be useful for basically making patterns look organic. So I think the main takeaway of this tutorial is we can actually use the noise function or the cell noise function or the hash noise function to generate either, either a random number or a random texture. Um, we're going to be using this to generate patterns. So I think that's the end of this tutorial. I think we've done enough for this one. I'll save more stuff for the next one. And as always, I like to end this by uh, promoting my Patreon. But listen up to this. Uh, Patreon is the way that I fund this tutorial series. I would not be able to make an open shading language tutorial series uh, without my generous patrons because it's a thing nobody seems to really care about. It's a very niche kind of thing. It's useful, but it's niche, so it doesn't really generate views or anything like this. So it's thanks to the financial support of the patrons that I can keep making this and do what I do best. So there's a link in the description if you want to contribute or or if you want to get stuff in return, like early access to tutorials, I've already uploaded a couple uh, beyond this point, so you can actually see more of this tutorial series. Blend files, exclusive tutorials, Patreon is the place to get it. Um, but in general, if you want to support what I do, even a dollar, then that would be amazing. And thank you to all the 550 some patrons. And I've seen that some more patrons have rolled in ever since I started this series. So I'm very grateful. Uh, I can tell you guys are enjoying, enjoying OSL. So that's it for this one. A lot of code. We'll probably make more code in the next one.